Welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great day as always out there. I'm gonna begin by talking to you guys about Micron Technologies today. Now, this one is a favorite among retail investors. It has not had a good year, as we can kind of see here. Year to date, it's down 42.96%. Over the past five years, it is up 35.20%. So have I've been making this video a while back, and there actually is some content on this channel talking about Micron. While it appeared cheap, we are going to be discussing the broader semiconductor industry as well as some points made by Micron as to what the company is going to do going forward and how the company sees this progression within the industry. Currently, the company has a market cap capitalization of about 60.25 billion US dollars with a P ratio of about 6.23% and a dividend yield, a small little dividend of about 0.84%. Now, if we're going over to the PowerPoint presentation, this is the investor presentation, the sales pitch, we might be able to call it. And we're going to get an idea as to what the company want, wants us to focus on or highlight and see, okay, is it appealing to us? Okay, so to begin, we have the different segments here. We have data center, PC and graphics, mobile and intelligent edge. So if you guys don't know what Micron does, just think memory. That's the simplest way I can really put it. And these are the different segments that we want to pay attention to as far as growth goes. And we want to make sure that the company is making strides or inroads in each of these segments. Now, we've talked about other companies such as Intel and AMD actually reported uh, today. And we're going to actually talk about that, I guess, in a separate video, but specifically with the client segment. Client segment was down but data center was up and the stock is reacting negatively. But again, we'll wait for that video specifically. Now we look at the industry outlook. So this is the company telling us what they believe. Now we got to take what they say and also analyze for ourselves. What are What is your opinion going forward? I'd love to hear your comments down in the comments section below on this. And uh, we can see that we expect supply growth to be significantly above demand growth in current year 2022, contributing to very high supplier inventories for both DRAM and NAND. So one thing I wanna focus on is talking a little bit about inventory. We talked about this with the last video on Micron, how important inventory is and paying attention to that inventory growth because as soon as you have this inventory buildup, it can be a bit problematic. Remember also to an extent, to an extent, to a large extent actually, uh, this is a highly commoditized industry. A lot of the times you wanna focus on the lowest cost producer in order to supply that memory because memory is memory is memory. Now, to an extent though, I did say to a large extent, but to an extent because there are different types of memory. We won't get into that here. I, I think that uh, calls for a more complex video, so to speak. But we do see the outlook of uh, current year 2023 and beyond. We do see long-term DRAM bit growth to be in the mid-teens percentage. Okay, so we might consider this when we're doing our evaluation process. Slightly lower than our prior expectations of mid to high teen due to the moderation in expectations of long-term PC unit sales trends. Now, I'd wonder what they were doing in this analysis. Were they pitching a continued growth from what we saw in the COVID-19 pandemic. Would be very interesting for us to kind of pencil that out, but continue to expect NAND market, which benefits from elasticity. So elasticity just means that it's more sensitive, right? More sensitive to certain changes and to grow around 28% over the long term. Okay, so longer term growth in the NAND market, right? but however, PC sales trends or DRAM a bit of a hindrance there is what they're expecting. Okay, so lower expected growth on some fronts, maybe higher expected growth on other fronts, but this is kind of gonna be important for later down the line. Now we do also see that the supply is expected to grow as well as, uh, or below demand growth. So they expect more people to desire the product and the, the supply itself will grow below. That's very important because like I was just talking about the commoditization of these products, memory is memory is memory. Uh, at least let's look at it from a consumer perspective and then we'll kind of extrapolate from that and go to a business perspective. So if you're a consumer and you're trying to buy, let's say a terabyte of memory, you're gonna probably go on somewhere like Amazon, Best Buy, wherever you go and you're gonna try to see, well, what's the best bang for your buck? As a consumer, you're not gonna think too much about let's say maybe the quality as someone else might think. There are people out there like that. I know some of you do watch the channel. Now, let's go a little bit deeper or a little bit, let's say, into the business to business market. And business to business, as we've been talking on this channel for a long time, every time we bring this up, it is very cutthroat. At the end of the day, businesses are gonna be a lot more, let's say, picky than a consumer. They're gonna be a lot more cost-focused, conscious, because at the end of the day, they are trying to pick the best product that will also help them make the most money. Well, 
it's a bit of a different dynamic, but at the very least, the loyalty is going to be a bit less as, as long as there's not really a cost to changing. Now, they're modeling single digit percentage growth in DRAM industry supply in 2023 and supply growth in NAND in uh, current year 2023 is also expected to fall below demand growth. So again, we want to see that come true because what that basically means is all the players in this industry will win and the low cost producer is going to win the most. And Hopefully that's going to be uh, Micron here. So some further commentary, some key actions and outlooks. So they made a significant reduction to CapEx and for full year 2023 CapEx would be around 8 billion. We're gonna talk about the investments they're making in the United States over the next 10 years, which we'll get to. And then we expect full year uh, 2023 WFE CapEx to decline nearly 50%. So basically we talked about this in the last videos with the cash flows, that the cash flows were actually projected to increase. Now this is again, coming from always management, updating their guidance. And with this, it's kind of coming into fruition that 2023 cash flows are probably going to be a bit better than 2022 or even, uh, well, we saw actually with a gap net income is a different story, but we will put that to the side. If you guys are curious, go check out the older videos on Micron. So to immediately address our inventory situation and reduce supply growth, we are selectively reducing util utilization of both DRAM and NAND. Okay, so again, you're going to see a lot of commentary around inventory. Again, because inventory is very important for a company like Micron, for a lot of these companies, but for a company like Micron is specifically so. The whole sector in memory, really, it's important to pay attention to inventory levels. All right. So our CapEx and utilization actions will have an adverse impact on our fiscal 2023 costs, but are necessary to bring our supply and inventory closer to industry demand. We will aim to grow our DRAM and NAND supply in line with demand over time while continuing to optimize our costs and portfolio. Okay, so a lot of uh, corporate speak, so to speak, uh, pun intended. <laughs> and what we kind of see from there is that the company is saying, well, we're making these moves to become more efficient, but of course they're going to say that. And I think we can move on from there because not much else. Okay. So I'll look a little picture. So a little, little pause here to have some lighthearted humor. We have a, we have a picture of the chief financial officer. Um, okay. So now we do see a breakdown of how they did, and we are seeing a, a down quarter over quarter and down 20% year over year. A lot of companies that we've been covering in the semiconductor space are going through a trough, which I will show you guys. And I think that's pretty much it. I want to go over uh, the financials here, but uh, let's kind of go through some of this and express or talk about some of it. We do see a, a percentage breakdown of everything. Gross profit margins are pretty strong at 46%. Operating income is also strong at 33%, and net income is very strong at 31%. However, keep in mind, this is on a gap measure, gap measure, net income gap, just think of that. And we're going to take a look at, well, the cash flows, again, go check out the older videos to show you how the cash flows might differ from gap net income. Okay, so let's go down to the uh, totality. And you can see how net income margins have risen uh, year over year. So this is for full year 2021. And then full year 2022, uh, we do see a 25% to a 31%. So good note to note that. Now going over some of this, I want to actually find and see if they highlight this. But here we go. This is the cash flows. So net cash provided by operating activities. We do see a breakdown based on quarter and quarter. And so we see quarter four, quarter three, and then quarter four, 2021. Uh, we do see it is down year over year, but it is also down quarter over quarter. I'd be paying attention more to the year over year just because of the nature of the comparability of things. And we to note, we are down. Um, now going to see if they actually give this to us, uh, they do have it right here. So net cash, they have a, a net cash position of 4 billion, and this is actually reducing it from the current portion of long-term debt. So this is the debt that is due within the current year. So 6.9 billion. So I love that they give us this figure because it gives us an, again, the net cash position, not the total net cash position. Cause some will say, well, we should probably also calculate the total long-term debt and see from that. But again, it's, it's more of a quick approach to just looking at the current year and current net cash position is 4.1 billion. So basically they're not going to go bankrupt. Okay. This year, that's for sure. <laughs> but that shouldn't be of any surprise to any of you watching this. So one thing I want to show you guys is, and I might put this in the link down below. If I forget, I apologize. And I'll try to remember to do this, but uh, this is the global semiconductor sales increase 0.1% year over year in August. And if I show you guys this one, and let's actually do a zoom in here. So you can kind of see the this graph here on the right. 
Uh, you can see the percent change year over year, each uh, year going back to 1996. And then we have 2022 over here. We do see that again, it's starting to dip as a percent change year over year. And you can see the total number in revenue in the other color. So we have two colors here. And uh, you can see that it is actually taking a little bit of a dip. So this is where I'll pause and do some commentary on the cyclicality of this industry. This is something that we've talked about extensively on Capital Mindset, but I just want to highlight to you guys yet again that you want to be careful as to when you get involved in semiconductors. A lot of retail uh, thinks semiconductor industry is very sexy. And while, yes, it is very sexy, uh, we want to be careful and try our best to optimize our entry. Uh, but, you know, if you're a long-term investor, um, again, I, I would not say to completely ignore <laughs> the technology because that's something you do want to familiarize yourself a little bit. And the best way you can do that is try finding a community or someone you know in your life that maybe works in this industry and you can probably ask them some questions. Um, it's not gonna, you're not going to become an expert, but you can at least not go blindly into the dark um, and buy something like, let's say, Intel. Um, cough, cough. Anyways, uh, but yeah, with Micron, you want to pay attention to the cyclicality of things. And on this downturn, it's typically has been, and we've talked about this in a couple live streams and some videos on Micron, typically it's been a good time to buy Micron when it's at or below book value. And typically you want it actually a little bit below book value, replacement value. So where you could say the ne the capital necessary to basically copy or create a new Micron is greater than what the share price is today or the totality of the market cap. And that's something as, as kind of a barometer you could use. It's not it's not gonna be foolproof, but it's, a, it's at least a good barometer. So uh, now we have a super investors, right? Super investors, what, what do I mean by that? So I'm not showing this in front of you right now as form of, you know, for the sake of accuracy. I'm just trying to show um, some moves that are kind of recorded in the past regarding Monish Pabrai and his Micron position. Now, we're just going to talk briefly about it, but a super investor, I guess you could classify it as, let's say, I think it's a famous investor with historically good returns or perceived to be historically good returns. I will let everyone else just debate all that in either the comment section or amongst yourselves. But um, just for the sake of argument here, I just wanted to mention that Monish Pabrai, I think, I believe this is his largest um, percent holding within the United States markets. And uh, again, he has some experience within this sector. So that's kind of what he likes about it. But he's spoken about it extensively, talking about how Micron is the toll road, so to speak, of everything. And uh, I don't necessarily agree with that again. But I want to just portray or explain that side of things because I don't want to ignore it. Okay, so I'll do my best as to explain an ulterior opinion as to myself, but uh, the way he's described it, okay, and I recommend you guys go to hear him out himself. Uh, again, third party here talking about him, but he's mentioned that okay, when I when I buy a memory company, everyone needs memory, and in that way, it's kind of like a toll road. I would argue, and he says it's like a toll road on the cloud because these cloud service providers they need to constantly buy more and more and more memory. Uh, I would not like it more to a toll road, unlike the actual cloud service providers. I usually refer to them as the toll road of the internet because I think that's actually more accurate. And I think the toll road analogy is used a bit too much now. But uh, yeah, I just want to mention that, that memory at the end of the day is a necessity and there are going to be players that uh, offer memory, a lot of them, but who is the lowest, lowest cost provider? Well, presently, that is Micron. That can change. We also have other players like Samsung, and we also have other players like Seagate Technologies. We also have some that are in uh, Taiwan. I'm, I think it's UMC, or I think it's UMC Holdings. But anyways, talking about this sector, you want to get the lowest cost provider, and presently, Micron is trading at an interesting price point where it has compressed a bit. You can t pay attention to this one, long-term price to book value. Now, again, you can see how since uh, 9 to 2021, as the quarters have progressed, we have come down to about almost book value or approaching book value. And we'll take a look at another place uh, soon. But yes, we're basically hitting almost at book value, which kind of makes it a bit more interesting, in my opinion, if you were one to kind of question or say, okay, well, do I 
get involved in Micron now or not? And as you can see from the portfolio, I'm not involved in Micron presently. I will talk about this in a portfolio update video. So if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe if you so want, and you can come back. I typically do a live stream because it allows people to ask questions. Uh, so uh, I like to do portfolio updates via that avenue. Okay, and they're usually titled portfolio updates so you guys know which ones they are. Okay, so enough about that, but I wanted to mention that because there are actually two semiconductor stocks that have, and I'm just waiting for um, it to update because they're coming from the same brokerage and that brokerage always takes me a little bit. But regardless, um, we have Micron here and I think we'll, it's time we, uh, we look at the valuation itself. So I kind of took the time and just went ahead and plugged everything in and I just want to give up some commentary here. So remember, if you recall the older videos on Micron Technologies, we did talk about how there are discrepancies between how the net income is recognized because it's on the accrual basis because it's a gap measure and how the cash flow is. So remember, the analyst estimates were a bit different going forward. And so we do see, again, you see estimates are on the rise. Remember, we were talking about that CapEx reduction. So that makes sense. It clocks in. And we are expected to see a decline overall. But again, we're seeing that with the broad semiconductor sector. We're seeing a broad-based decline in terms of uh, company to company or business to business expense and investment in various areas. So not too much of a surprise there, as well as a slowdown in general PC markets. So uh, again, not too much of a surprise there that the estimates are coming down. However, if you use other third-party websites and you probably find what analyst estimates are, they are all basically saying in 2023 that they are expected to have continued growth. So you don't be surprised with that massive growth figure. Again, it's basically implying some sort of recovery. So just keep that in mind. And then so when we kind of put it all in together with this company, you're probably going to want a decent margin of safety as far as what, what point you enter. I'd be also kind of paying attention in this case to the replacement value or, or the book value. Historically for Micron, that's actually been a really good entry point. Will you get that opportunity? I do not know. I do not have the crystal ball, but will it be interesting if it's at the replacement value? Absolutely for me. All right, so we do have an average price target coming in at $57.53. That is revised now. Only implies an upward movement of 5.33%. We do, however, also see the institution and rating, typically a lot of outperform and buy, or it's, uh, we have actually two that actually just came in and uh, are a bit underweight there. So Piper Sandler, Morgan Stanley, again, probably a little bit more cautious on the macroeconomic environment as to what the spending is going to be in the industry. Uh, the, the model's not actually picking up any risk of bankruptcy at the present moment in time. And uh, that's pretty much what we'll go with. We're, we're not at book value yet. Book value is kind of coming in at about $45 per share. We also have tangible book value at $43 a share around there. So I'd probably be putting this on my watch list. And if we get to see those levels, that's probably going to be my my entry point um, if I end up deciding because I'm still, you know, it's not my main priority. I have other stocks that I'm prioritizing, but I just want to give or touch base and update everyone on Micron. I think it's a, a company that, you know, retail is kind of, uh, you know, they, they like it. They like it. And for better or for worse, it is a good company. All right. It's not, it's not a bad company. I don't want to say that by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it looks cheap. Yes. Can it get cheaper? Absolutely. And it just depends on where we kind of go from here. How is sentiment around this market? It is, uh, I guess, we're, we're actually noticing this, or you guys are probably noticing this out there. Retail is a bit more skittish on depending on the stock that we're even talking about. Um, will there always be opportunities? Yes, there are always going to be opportunities. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. Uh, share it if someone, if, if you feel like it added that value and someone's actually looking for that. Uh, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to get more content like this. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.